This week on Crunch Week, more earnings mayhem, Twitter hits an all-time low, and VR gets weird. I am Matthew Lindley. I'm Alex. I'm Megan Rose Dickey. OK, so a couple companies got whacked th uh, this week. Yeah. It was kind of a bloodbath for a few firms. So for people who don't know, um, Etsy and Fitbit both went public inside the last quarter. So this was their first kind of coming out party on earnings. And uh, it went bad, bad. Very, very bad, in fact. Um, no good at all. No good at all. In fact, Etsy is now below its IPO price. Oh, so Jesus. they got hit so hard, they're trading about thirteen fifty a share. We're public at 16 um, So it's really been a tough time for them. And then Fitbit um, had an amazing quarter, simply amazing sounding quarter, and uh, also got whacked because people are worried about their future growth. But we're seeing investors, I think, have a very high bar mm -hmm. for performance of these companies. And uh, if you don't make it and you're highly valued, it's really, really rusty. I thought they sold like a ton of wearables though. Yeah, I mean like Fitbit is really popular among like the normies. So just like even like the mainstream. So like normies, like people not like super into the tech industry, but like, you know, like like your mom or your grandma. I don't know, I could be Is totally that making your mom that joke? Up. I can't quite tell. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, well, actually, my mom has the so, Apple no, watch. No, like your, your mom's so normal, she's a Fitbit. Oh. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, I mean, come so, on now. so wait, so why weren't investors happy with, with Fitbit again? All right, the, the gist is they sold about $400 million of devices, and they had a higher than expected per share profit, but they said for Q3, the next quarter, the current quarter, they're not going to do as well, which is, I think, fair, because if you have a blowout quarter by accident, it's not part of your, of your sequential growth, but investors wanted more consistent uh, earnings expansion. It's also like not even the Christmas season yet, right? Which is True. When, it's a very seasonal business, I would presume. They That's sold... Uh, 4.5 million in the last quarter, which is up 250% right. from the uh, year ago period. And they do have a lot of models, which is probably very appealing to people because like, they can either get like a cheaper model, the right. more expensive model, they have lots of different options, whereas like, the Apple Watch is... Do they have a watch as well? Um, well, I mean, well, they all have a clock, so it's like, how do you define, yeah. like, watch? Yeah, 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 I mean, they're all kind of watches. I mean, does it tell time? Well, it has yes. to be a square <laughs> thing. No, no, to be a watch, has to be a square thing overpriced, sold by <laughs> Apple, it doesn't do enough, and it's bad software. Oh, I'm sorry, was that mean? <laughs> have you ever bought anything on Betsy? Uh, I haven't, but I love the idea of the service behind it. I know it's very, very popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I bought, um, oh yeah, I've, I actually bought uh, this mini harmonica off of Etsy. That's a yeah. mini harmonica? Yeah, it is. That's awesome. Does it actually work? Yeah. Can I, is it, is it going to like blow out the mic? No, or? you're fine. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> That's our brain. We're doing a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you just like find like cool little Weird random yeah. knickknacks and I'm like, but then like, you know, a lot of people are also on Etsy if they have like their like jewelry businesses that mm -hmm. they're trying to right. get, mm -hmm. um, trying to like get uh, going. And so like, it's like, it's a really cool marketplace. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and it's doing well. I mean, their yeah. earnings actually beat on revenue and profit in mm -hmm. the last quarter. But the problem was they had a big paragraph called like guidance. Mm -hmm. And this is when you try to show off a little bit. If you can, they did not because they said, look, we're going to have gross merchandise problems because of the strong dollar abroad. Mm -hmm. We're going to increase our marketing spend. We're going to increase our hiring. And growth from our key revenue driver is going to slow. So they said, lower gross sales, higher expenses, and slowed revenue growth. And investors were like, yeah, no, no thanks, pass. And then Do you think that the, because they're doing so well, like guidance would be sort of, I mean, it's a growing company, right? So don't they want to spend more in order to, I mean, again, it's not even the holiday season yet, right? I mean, I, I've bought tons of gifts off of Etsy yeah, yeah, yeah. and even like art and things like that. Yeah. Right? So I, I, I don't well, know. Well, when your public consistency is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. And these companies, are, I think, are learning straight out the gate that their general optimistic rosy projections are good, but that doesn't buy their short-term share performance. And that's what they're dealing with right now. It, it, it's, it's a tough market because people expect a lot from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So speaking of getting hammered, uh, Twitter's stock fell to an all-time low. Uh, Again, right? Again, or, several times this week. It's yeah. hard to keep yeah. track at this point in time. Yeah, so what is going on again? I feel like this is like a recurring story. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's ask a question. Who is Twitter's CEO? The answer is uh, no one. Uh, right. Well, uh, Chris Saka had a very strong opinion about this this what morning. What did he say? Like, I think he said he wants Jack Dorsey to yeah. be CEO, if I remember. Yeah, he, yeah, he's very, yeah, he's very on board with Jack Dorsey becoming the official CEO. And Jack is the current interim CEO and, yeah. and one of the co-founders. Yeah, yeah and currently CEO of Square. Yeah. So it's, he, uh, if this goes down, he's going to have quite, uh, quite a big task ahead of him. Do we think Jack is a good choice here in the little Ponderati? I mean, I think that um, you know, obviously, he's one of the product original product visionaries of Twitter, right? And so, you know, he's one of the guys that. 
you know, helped with redesigns and things like that. And he has a very strong design sense. You know, he started Square, so he's got more experience than he used to have, right? But then again, there's a lot of contenders um, for the potential CEO role. The Adam main Bain. ones being Adam Bain and Jack Dorsey, right? right? Um, but then Zaka was saying that what, what was it that Bain would be better for like a chief operating? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. which would that is be a you know fit? he's he's been running Twitter's business for a while now. Twitter's business has generally never been really that much of a problem. It's, it's been, been fantastic. It's been doing really really well. You know they've but it's always been the user growth, which Dorsey said in the last earnings report that you know is like this is a problem for us. Like yeah, and that's why the Jack thing confuses me a little bit. I don't know if he has enough outside vision to drive the product in a way that makes it work. And also I'm I'm selfish because we use Twitter all the time, I don't want it to change at all, but I also don't want it to die. So it's kind of a combination of how can we preserve what works for us, because we create all the content on Twitter, essentially, and also make it work for people that want to kind of join and enjoy it. But the stock price is getting killed because of this uncertainty, I think, and their really lackluster uh, last earnings report, and no real positive news to turn the tide of sentiment. Mm -hmm. And so there's no reason for a, for a bottom right now, I don't yeah, but just the fact that Jack Dorsey is such a product guy, like obviously like like we like we use Twitter every day, we have TweetDeck open, but like to like the mainstream, um, just like to a mainstream audience, like they still, and we kind of talked about this last week, like they still don't really know what to do with Twitter. So I feel like maybe Twitter needs like, not like a total product overhaul, but like something significant needs to change in order to get more people actually on the platform and, and better understand. Well, we it. spoke with Alex Roto, their head of engineering, not too long ago, and he sort of described it as like a spectrum, right? Where you have your sort of power users on, on one side, mm -hmm. and you have the kind of like more casual, like first time users on the other side. And the idea being that. Twitter should work for all points of that spectrum, right? Is right. That and that's, an, that's going to be an interesting design challenge. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe Dorsey like is the one to handle that one. I'm glad I don't have to figure that out. That's yeah. Not, like, <laughs> do you, do you, you want to fix hard. Twitter? I'm sure they're no. looking for someone to fix Twitter. No, right I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm officially out of the running for anything involving that company. It's like it's like it's like a black. But you were in the career. running, maybe like three or four weeks ago. I so. was definitely no. I have no no. I, they wouldn't hire me to run the broom closet. <laughs> I, there's a reason I have no authority here at TechCrunch, let alone at Twitter. Come on. That's ridiculous. Okay. So. So in, term, in addition to things getting weird, as Alex uh, potentially being the CEO of Twitter, um, <laughs> VR uh, had an interesting Peter. moment uh, this week. Um, I don't even know where to begin describing it. So if you've got a better answer than me. On this yeah, one. just what uh, Palmer Luke, uh, Palmer Lucky, um, founder of Oculus, he just kind of looked like a weirdo on the cover of Time. But so to describe, it, it, it's pasty white dude jumping in the air without shoes on, doing this. The, Prance-ish thing, you know, it's fine. Wearing an Oculus, looking like, I don't know, like a bag of marshmallows that were stuffed into a pair of pants, and then the Oculus is terrible. Mm -hmm. And so he was Photoshopped, of course, because this is a beautiful thing to make fun of. And it was reminiscent to me of the old Kevin Rose dig business we covered when he's doing this. Mm -hmm. It looked like a total tool bag. Uh, I think tech bros that are white just should not go on magazine covers, because they tend to look very silly. Yeah, but like my question is like, did like did he know what he was getting himself into? Like, do we think that he was just like, oh yeah, like I'd like to look this ridiculous on the cover of Time? They probably take a thousand pictures in the photo shoot, and they pick which one they use, right? He doesn't get to pick. True. So it's probably a long photo. There's a jump. He's like, all right, whee, and then snap, and then boom. Okay, so do you think this is going to make things a little weird for VR, especially in like the public eye? This is no. a big Time cover on like. Yeah, because Drew was saying it was like the Google Glass moment of VR. Which only matters Which Google Glass tech. moment. We're talking about the, the Robert Scoble in oh, the yeah, shower yeah. thing. Like, but ah. I was like kind of into that. I was like, oh, that's crazy. But like, <laughs> it okay. intrigued me. Well, I was I like, mean, okay. The, no, the question is, you know, will VR have like sort of mainstream adoption? And with this, you know, idea of having some kind of an iconic cover um, being a moment, right? And right. I've talked extensively with people about this kinds of stuff, and it, it's kind of split. But the idea of it being a very immersive experience means kind of inherently that it's a less social experience. And then you have other, right. you know, other versions of VR out there, like the HoloLens, for example, which is less of an immersive experience. More right? AR, yeah. So it's sort of like a big spectrum of potential use cases. Maybe Oculus looks more like gaming and movies, whereas HoloLens is more of like workplace applications, right? The question is, is this something that's single million digits install base, or does it actually break out into the general mainstream? Well, it's either 50,000 or 50 million, right? So what's, a lot of what's, your, what's your answer in 160 characters? What time frame? Five years. Mm -hmm. uh, tens of millions in the US. Yeah. I mean, like my thing is that, OK, because you were saying that um, that it's like an antisocial experience. But I just feel like video. I don't know about antisocial. OK, well it's, well, it's not, let's say it's not and like super social, <laughs> we'll say. But so, 
<laughs> but not anti. But so, but it's just video gaming in general. It's usually just like people by themselves. Well, that's not true with like, MOBAs and so forth. That's not true with what? Um, in MOBAs, League of Legends. Don't yeah, yeah. Okay, they're, but they're then isn't that teammates. like? But aren't they like online speaking they with people? So like they can still be in their little like mask and still like talking to people online, but just like be in their own little zone. So I mean, like I I could see people actually getting really into this. So I weird, mean, mo potentially a weird moment for VR. But that's all the time we have this week. Thank you for joining us.